Hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're going to do 225 pounds of meat on my new mobile smoker. Unfortunately I didn't get all the video that I wanted to because when guests started showing up I did not have time to record. I did record on my cell phone and for some reason some of the parts are really washed out with the sunlight. I didn't want to use my cannon because we had threats of rain in the forecast which it didn't. But that's okay. I really didn't have time because I was hosting the party. I do apologize for the short footage. Hey everybody. It's like 4 a.m. in the morning and I don't want to wake anybody up. So I didn't really have time to record all the trimming of the meat or uh, you know anything good like that. So here I wanted to show you what I have going on. Here I have four boneless pork butts. And coming down here soon will be one about 23 pound brisket, which probably after cutting all the fat off might be down to about a 15 pounder. And here's a 10 pounder brisket. This is just the start of the first cook. Here I'd like to give a big shout out to Steve from Uncle Steve's Shake. He's from Texas and he makes these rubs that are to die for. He's got the uh, Gator Shake, Thick Meat, the Spicy R, and the Original. And I'm telling you, I did 225 pounds of meat for this party, and I used every bit of his rubs on them, and everybody loved them. And just so you guys know, I had about 10 pounds of meat left over, which was good. We had a lot of people here and a lot of hungry bellies. All right, everybody, so check this out. I have to give another shout-out. Well, not only to Uncle Steve's Shake, but also to Steel Drum Smoker Barbecue. His name's Dash, and I'll tell you what, he gave me some very important information on how to reheat brisket and uh, pork butt. Uh, yeah, I had to make the brisket and pork butts the day before. Okay, so basically I went ahead and did the whole process and left it whole. I let it rest, I think it was like four hours I let it rest. And it was still warm, so I just tented the cover up and let it cool down. So then I put it in the refrigerator overnight for the next day to do the reheat. So in his tips, well, maybe I did it a little bit different, but pretty much the same concept. I took the au jus, the juices from uh, before I put it in the refrigerator. I put it in a fat separator, took the juices the next day and poured them into the pan, covered it with foil, and put it in the oven. I set the oven for around 300 degrees for approximately, I want to say it took about an hour and a half. And I mean, I'm telling you, it was piping hot. And you would not believe, and I do apologize for not getting that footage, footage. I was so busy. But regardless, the reheating instruction that Dash gives you in his video, my God, it, it's phenomenal. Because I couldn't believe how much it was like if you were pulling it the same day. Uh, his reheating instructions is the way to go. Uh, the brisket, the same thing. Uh, and I put all the pans like in the oven and kind of timed it out for the party and everything. Because I wanted the, the pork to be pulled fresh, you know, for the party. Uh, so go check out uh, Dash over at Steel Drum Smokers. And I'll tell you what, you'll learn a lot from that guy. And Dash, thank you. I uh, appreciate it. I really do. Uh, that was uh, that that saved my butt because I was I didn't want to get up at nine o'clock at night to start the smoker and to do the entire cook and then be worn out by you know by the time the party started at three I just didn't want to be wore out and then I wouldn't have time to have a couple drinks and you know socialize with everybody and for those of you that ever done like 225 pounds of meat on a new smoker. You're hosting a party, you're serving, you know, as far as slicing and, you know, at the table, just communicating. Let me tell you, it is, well, that was my first time for that many people. And it was, it was a great feeling, but I just didn't have time to get my camera, uh, that one there, uh, and, or even my cell phone. I was that busy. That's why my, this first cook, uh, didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but I promised the next time I do a cook, I got it now. Even if I have to leave my camera recording the whole time, 
stationary there and pop out my cell phone here and there or whatever, I'm going to get you guys some good footage on this cooker one of these days. Uh, so there you have it. Dash, thanks again, brother. You That was the perfect uh, reheating instructions that I've seen yet. So, uh, and that was actually the first time I've ever done that, having to cook before, you see. So uh, that's why I'm real excited about his directions on how to do a reheat. Dash, Uncle Steve, for sending me extra rubs, for uh, helping with this party, meant a lot. Your rubs are kick butt. Your spicy R, your gator shake, your thick meat, the original, all of it. And I took them and separated with the ribs and then with the brisket. I did all different types of mixtures. Everybody loved them. There was no complaints at all. I just had to throw that in there. If you guys never tried an Uncle Steve's shake, you have to try it. All of them. My personal favorites is thick meat because it's nice and peppery. I like the spicy R because it's not too spicy. But you know you get the kick in the background. And I like spicy stuff. Also, uh, the original is just great overall. Just, you know, for a simple rub. It's just, it's really good. You got to try it for yourself. So, hey, guys. I'm going to get back to the video. And please go check them out. And we'll see you in a little bit. All right, so I'd like to show you guys my first cook here. Right here, you see, I got four boneless pork butts. They've been on for about five hours, looking like they're looking pretty good so far. They're at about 160 degrees at the present moment. Probably going to end up wrapping them here about 165 or so, or maybe a little bit more color. Uh, here is uh, the 20 pound brisket, or 23 pound, probably 15 pounds after all the fat trimmings. And that was a 10 pound brisket that I went ahead and wrapped. And I just wanted to show you that this thing will rotate with full catering pans. I believe I could fit three of them. I haven't done it for sure, but I believe I could fit three uh, full catering pans on one rack. That's not too bad. But I thought I'd give you guys an update. Uh, I'm running, running temperatures at about 225 degrees. Well, how's everybody doing? I'm back. We're just setting up for the graduation party for my kid. Uh, ceremony was last night. It was awesome. Uh, and I got some food going on. As you guys seen before, I did the briskets and the uh, uh, the pork butts yesterday. And right before the ceremony, it was timed out perfectly. I'm hoping this will time out just as well. So one second, I'll show you what I got on this thing. All right. And here you're gonna find 12 slabs of ribs, which are approximately about two and a half hours in. Okay, this is on the rotisserie side, obviously. Let me get back away from that smoke. I don't know if you guys can see in there too well. And I also have one, I wanna say it's about an eight pound or a 10 pound uh, beef knuckle. I know a lot of you guys uh, don't know what that is, but it's not just a little piece of bone with meat on it. So some people think it is. So here she comes, rolling down. That is a beef knuckle. And you would think that it'd have a bone in it, but it doesn't. It's boneless. That big old chunk of meat's about 30 bucks over at Gordon's Food Services. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing spritzed down. Get over there on the back side. This top one here. It's in about a half an hour or so. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these babies wrapped. And I got to tell you, this thing's been holding temps like a champ. I I'm just, I'm totally impressed with it. That Dean, he did a great job on this smoker so far. And I know uh, we'll get stage two done here soon, or hopefully uh, before the end of the year. No rush, brother. Other than that, I'll go ahead and show you the other side. And over here, so far, 
I'll have some chicken going on here in about an hour or so. Go ahead and get this opened up. And here you guys know my favorite. Pork candy bites. Whoa, look at that. Now the, these uh, four racks here are the same, as you can see. Look at them. I got them on cooling racks because it's a little bit easier when I go to transfer them to the foil paper. This side just has the one here. And then on these three racks, because uh, I'm going to put the foil, when I go to wrap these up, they're going to go back in here. And um, uh, these three racks, I'll probably end up putting all the chicken on and go from there. I'm also uh, going to be putting these uh, warming racks to use. They seem to average around 150. And when these here are at 150, the main chambers, anytime they're, you know, like around this temperature here at the 150, uh, both chambers run approximately, uh, let me shut this door, about 225 to 250 degrees. It just all depends. Uh, but usually that's right where they stay, about 150. I'd like to get them down to 140 if I could. Uh, but we'll just have to, to wait and see. So anyway, a little setup, a few hours before the party. Here you'll see that when I'm not using my warming box, I go ahead and stash my wood in there because it's amazing how much faster that wood ignites when it's preheated. Well, that's all I have for you today. And I do apologize again for not showing all the meat that I cooked on it, especially that chicken. The chicken turned out great. Everything turned out wonderful. I will assure you that the next time I have this mobile smoker out, I will do a much better job recording. Just so busy. I, it just all happened at once when people started showing up. So, But all right, guys. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Share to your friends. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day.